This is how you can make a AI message response system for your Discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting the source code from this video or any of the other videos on my channel, you can go ahead and join a super or god tier subscription on YouTube, or you can go ahead and get a god tier subscription on Discord. We also have a bot tier, which is a full zip file of the exact bot used in the tutorial videos. We also have four custom made bot packages based on a specific topic. All of this will be in the description below if you're interested and with that, let's go ahead and get into the code. All right, so to start, let's go over to community and we're gonna go ahead and create AI response.js. We're gonna start off by defining our context menu command builder. We're gonna get our embed builder and we're gonna get our application command type. And then we're gonna go ahead and do equals require and we can go ahead and get our discord.js package. Next, we're gonna go ahead and do cons puppeteer equals require and we can also go ahead and define our puppeteer package. Next, we're gonna go ahead and run our module.exports. We're gonna go ahead and open this up. We're gonna start off by getting our data, which is going to be our new and we can go ahead and say context menu command builder. We're gonna go ahead and set a name, which can be AI response. And since this is a context menu you can use capital letters we're going to go ahead and set a type and we can go ahead and do application command type dot message we're going to go ahead and add a comma we can do async executes we're going to go ahead and get our interaction and then we're going to open this up we're going to start off by doing await interaction dot defer reply and i'm just going to go ahead and set infernal to true in that defer so we don't have to do it later then we're going to do var message equals await interaction dot channel dot messages dot fetch and we can get our interaction dot target ID. Next, we're gonna do if message, and we can do dot content dot length. We can do is less than or equal to zero. We're gonna go and return awaits interaction dot edit reply, and we can go ahead and say content. I'm just gonna open this up. We can go ahead and get a caution emoji, and we can go ahead and say you must have message content to have AI be used. From there, we're gonna actually go ahead and write out our async function. We're gonna get response, and we can go ahead and open this up. We're going to do const browser equals awaits puppeteer.launch. And we're going to go ahead and get headless, which is going to be true. Then we can do const page and we can do equals await browser that new page, just like that. So we're going to go ahead and set all that up and we're going to do wait page go to, and we're going to get the AI link that we use in all of these AI videos. So just go ahead and copy this down. Then once you do that, we're going to go ahead and get all of our scrapers. So to start, we're going to need the text box that we're actually going to go ahead and send the AI message to. So that's going to be const text box selector equals, and we're going to get our text error. Area. Then we can just go ahead and get exactly that. Make sure you copy it down exactly, otherwise it won't work. Then we're gonna go ahead and wait for that selector using await page that wait for a selector. Then we're gonna go ahead and type in our message. So we can go ahead and do await page dot type, and we're gonna type in our text box selector, and we're gonna type in our message dot content, and then we're gonna go ahead and do await keyboard dot press, and we're just gonna go ahead and press enter. Following that, we're going to go ahead and wait for another selector. This time it's going to be our final bot response paragraph. So again, copy all of this down. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. And then we can go ahead and catch an error and we can just go ahead and return if there is an error. Um, then what we have to do is we have to go ahead and create a value variable based on our final response. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, a val and we're going to go ahead and get that same ID from above here, but we're going to leave out the paragraph. We're going to do async elements and we're going to open that up. And then all you have to do is return an element map with our element to our text content. So essentially what we're doing is we're getting the values in this text box response and we're returning the text content. Then we can go ahead and do await and we can do browser.close. So we're getting rid of our browser. We no longer need that. Now we can just go ahead and format that value. So we can go ahead and push a couple of values out and format it properly. So you can do value.shift. And then we're going to go ahead and do return value.join. And we're going to do four backslash ends just like that. So over the time that I've been using this function, every time we do four backslash ends, it looks the best. So I'd recommend doing that. Then we're gonna go ahead and write out our embed. So we can do const embed equals, and we can do new embed builder. We're gonna go ahead and set a color, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that blurple, and we can go ahead and set a description. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get a globe emoji, and we can just go ahead and say, here's the AI response for the message. I'm gonna finish that bolding. We can do backslash tick, and we can do message, and we can go ahead and do contents and we can finish that off then we're going to do two backslash ends and we can do three backslash ticks and we can do weights and then we can use our get response function and then we're going to follow that up with our three closing backslash ticks to create that code block all that's left now is to take this embed and send it into a message so we're going to go ahead and do our edit reply so we can edit out that defer and get our embeds which is going to be our embed 
And because we already have a defer reply that sets infirm to true, we do not need to set it again down there. So with that, we're actually done with this entire command. So let's go ahead and restart the bot and test this out. All right, so essentially the premise of this entire system is if you wanted to get a AR response based off of a message sent in a channel. So like if somebody were to ask for help or ask for something that they are not sure of, or like in my case, ask for coding help, then what you could essentially do is you could go into their help post and if they gave you an error or something like it's not working, then you could go ahead and use the app. So essentially to test this out, we're just going to go in and send a couple of messages. So I'm just going to go ahead and say hello and we can go ahead and right click and I'm just going to go ahead and find our context menu. So that's going to be our AI response and it's going to go ahead and load and essentially what it's doing behind the scenes is it's opening up a browser and it's typing in the message content and then it's going to get the response back, format it and send it within our embed. So within, you know, maybe 10 to 30 seconds, we should get an AI response based off of that message. And then as you can see here, it goes ahead and edits it. It says, here is AI response for message, and it's gonna give hello. So that's the message we input. And then the AI is going to be hello, how can I assist you today? Now the cool thing about using code blocks is you can actually go in and copy that message. So like if this was a question about how a Discord server works or how code works or whatever, you could copy the response and reply to that message with that AI response. But let's go ahead and try something a little bit more complicated. Let's go ahead and say maybe how can I code a Discord bot in C Sharp? And if we were to send it, now obviously that's not gonna do anything, but if we were to go ahead and use our AI response, say you were a different member in the channel and you wanted to answer that question, but you might not know how to do it, we can go ahead and run that and then we're going to get our response and we'll be able to send it to the person. So again, after 10 to 30 seconds, we should get a response that is good enough to actually send. And here we have an entire response, which is actually pretty cool. Um, so we could go ahead and copy it and we could go ahead and send it. Now, one thing to keep in mind is AI responses might be pretty lengthy. So maybe it would be good to make a check to see if the response is over a certain amount of characters. And then if it is, you could just go ahead and return and saying that response is too long. But essentially this works and it's a very useful tool that I would see myself using in a lot of different aspects. So as you can make an AI response context menu system for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video.